If we just, ah, ah, this is <laughs> so precious. It's like Glamour Shots circa 1992. I don't, when was Glamour Shots big? Did you do Glamour Shots? I never actually did Glamour Shots. I wasn't that glamorous. <laughs> What's shaking, bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. So if you are into that, you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And today's video I'm super excited about because my five tips for a better flat lay video was super popular, still continues to be popular. Lots of folks ending up on this channel because of that video. But there have been a ton of questions now that have come up in the comment section of that video that I figured, let's go ahead and do a 2.0 version, five more tips for a better flat lay. So that is exactly what we're doing today specifically talking a lot about the lighting setup that I use for my food photography in doing a flat lay. So if that sounds exciting to you, you stick around. And today we are shooting with donuts because I feel like donuts do a really great job of illustrating everything we're gonna walk through today and two, because I just wanted to eat some donuts. So when it comes to flat lays, the majority of the time I am always working from this exact setup. I really don't deviate from this pattern simply because it works for me. It creates the kind of images that I like every single time. So real quick, let's walk you through all of the equipment. So I use one primary light source when I'm doing a flat light. Now, sometimes that's going to be a window light. And so you can have that here on the other side of this diffuser. But in this case today, I am using the Westcott LED Flex Mat, the two by two. I've talked about that here on this channel before. I love that light simply because it really replicates an actual window like that you're getting this beautiful quality and color of light and you can actually use it alongside window light it's not going to have any weird color cast issues because that is a really high quality LED that's why you pay the big bucks for good LEDs and then here in front of that I have my diffuser which you know me in that diffused life I really like that soft diffused light softer shadows that's what I go for stylistically and then I'm using the Canon 70D here today I've got that mounted to my seat stand. If you have any questions about how I mount that, what's the equipment to do that, have that linked all on my gear page down in the description box below. And then what's great about the 70D is it has the flip out LCD screen so I can see live time what's happening here on my work surface without having to like peer up over the top of it. Now if you don't have a flip out LCD or you do and you still want it to be up on a bigger screen, I've got my tethering video. If you missed that, it's up over here. Got that from last week. But then I also have my 50 millimeter F1 1.8 lens that nifty 50 figuring a lot of you guys are using that and that is a great lens to use for a flat lay because you don't have to be super high above the work surface in order to get a good view of what's going on even on a crop sensor camera which is what this is today and then one last piece of equipment here the beautiful fabulous bounce card I mean this poor little thing it has been through war it's got crud on it. it's got crap on it but guess what it still bounces light like a pro so if you don't have one of these you can either pick one up online I've got it linked below or you can just get some white foam core, whatever you're gonna use in order to bounce the light so we get some nice fill on there. Fill light, right? Fill, not like fill the guy, but fill the filling in, never mind. And then of course, in terms of the actual scene, I'm working with these beautiful donuts. And then I am shooting this just on a piece of pink foam core. This I got at Hobby Lobby for five bucks. And actually, even though they're not sealed, these do clean up kind of nicely. So if you've got some residue from those donuts afterward, just get a damp cloth, kind of run it over the top of it and cleans up like a dream. All right, so now onto the tips. And the very first tip, if you are not a lighting expert and you are not crafting elaborate lighting scenarios and diagrams and all of that, <laughs> then I would highly recommend simplifying your lighting setup to one single primary light source, your key light, that we're not dealing with multiple different light sources. Because this might seem counterintuitive, I see a lot of people who are creating lighting scenarios scenarios, maybe at their home, they're posting images of the Facebook group or sending me behind the scenes of what they're doing. And they've got an artificial light over here and an artificial light over here. And though it seems like, oh yeah, that'd be great because that's more light. That's actually not so helpful for the camera because those lights are then competing with one another, creating for a flat image. So that when we're working with a single primary light source, we're getting a nice bit of light. We're getting a nice bit of shadow, especially when it's properly diffused. And then if we just want to fill in those shadows and Instead of adding a second light source, all we have to do is just create a little reflection here on the side, bounce that over here just so that we're filling that in, brightening up those shadows if that's the style we're going for. And that's gonna work a lot more effectively in terms of creating a clear, crisp, 
dynamic image that's gonna read beautifully both online and print wherever you're putting it. And then along those same lines, tip number two then is to also pay further attention to those shadows. Are there other competing light sources that you're not thinking of? Maybe you're using natural window light, but do you have maybe some overhead lights on that are also competing with that primary light source? Or do you have a window open over here that's creating shadows going in a different direction? If you look at your scene and you see multiple shadows overlapping one another, or it's not really clear where the shadows are dropping, it's a good indication that you need to clean up your lighting situation you need to simplify the setup and you're gonna have a lot more success in your flat lay so now one little footnote along those same lines is that if you are ever shooting in a situation where you can't control the ambient light you can't shut off those lights or you don't have any sort of drapes to cover it because you're on location then it is really helpful to use some sort of flash based lighting so whether that be a strobe or a speed light because those are so powerful of a light they can completely knock out whatever ambient light is coming into that scene so that is an upcoming video stay tuned for that I promise I'll share more on that but just a little something to keep in the back of your mind in case you've never worked with off-camera flash before all right tip number three one of my favorites has to do with paying attention to where your light source is entering the frame and what direction then it is casting those shadows in so in this case we have a horizontal orientation for our image it's a landscape situation and the light is coming in from the top and casting those shadows downward but from a composition standpoint, our eyeballs love diagonals, right? Because it kind of draws our eye diagonally across the image. So what we can do is manipulate the light by moving it either to the top left or the top right so that those shadows are casting diagonally. Let me show you what I mean. Do, do, do. So if I just take the old flex mat, move it here up into this corner so now you can see that the light is entering the frame here in the upper right it is casting those shadows down to the lower left we can pull in the white bounce card opposite that light source just to fill in those shadows a bit and we've got a beautiful even lighting scenario here on our flat lay all right tip number four now is all about repositioning our food because we've got our light source placed but now what i love in food photography a lot of people love in food photography are some specular highlights and if you've never heard of that term if you just look at any of your favorite food photos anything you can look at online or on Instagram and you see that there's just like that little bit of sparkly factor those little reflections that happen on shiny foods whether it's a salad or it's a piece of meat in this case a donut that we get just that nice little bit of extra reflection that's a specular highlight that's something that we love in food photography so in order to achieve that what you're needing to do is reposition the surface of the food relative to the light so that it reflects back up to the camera lens as a reflection and so what we can do is like with this donut it's got a little bit of sheen to it and you can see we've got some highlights here on the edges but i'm just going to kind of move it around to see if oh 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 see right there oh <laughs> We've got this nice little bit of shine over here. It's picking up some highlights over here. That looks delicious. And we can do that here with all the donuts, depending on where they're placed, where the light is. Some of them may get it, some of them may not. But if you can get some specular highlights going on, your life is just gonna be so old. Oh, see, oh, that looks nice. Let me see. If... Oh, buddy, see, see, got that nice little shine right there. That's the good stuff. <laughs> Now, of course, I've dumped some sprinkles on the surface, and so that's why I've got the fan brush here at the ready, so I can just whisk them away, right? We've talked about the fan brush before in the food styling video. There we go. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. All right, so now fifth and final tip is to do one final check of all of your shadows just to ensure are they falling exactly where I want them to because we've moved our light, we've repositioned the food. Sometimes in the course of that process, a shadow can all of a sudden start getting cast over something that's supposed to be a key part of the image. Let me show you for example. Say at some point in the composition process, the arranging process, we had thrown a cup of coffee in here and we placed it right there. Well, compositionally, that kind of looks cool, right? We're rounding out the image with that coffee cup in that right corner. But the problem is because the direction of the light, now there is a shadow being cast over that center donut, which to me is the focal point and the focus of this image. We don't wanna cover that up with a shadow because we too, we also lose those specular highlights that we work so hard to get. So instead, what you might wanna do is then just a little bit of rearranging so that you can get the light casting over the subject, that we're not losing that, but that you can still incorporate all of the elements that you wanted. And then at that point, I think we're ready to take a shot.
make sure to line up your focus, right? We wanna make sure everything's in focus, that looks good. And then in terms of settings, I've got this at ISO 100, so no noise going on, nice, clean, crisp image. And because we are mounted to our C-stand, we don't have to worry about movement or shake. I've got that at one over 30 in terms of the shutter speed. So, and then in terms of aperture, we've got that at a 5.6, which you might be thinking, okay, Joni, that's a pretty wide open aperture. You know, don't you wanna go for something more like a seven, eight, nine? And you definitely could. I find there's added softness when you've got something in the fours, the five range, and it's still able to capture enough of the scene that, you know, we don't have a ton of variation of heights in here. So we'll get the full donut, we'll get what we're going for, but still a good bit of softness based just purely on my own style and what I'm going for. And then what I'm gonna proceed to do is mess around with this for like another 20 minutes and see if there's another composition that I like, cause Ah, oh, such is life. So hopefully this has got you excited and inspired. You wanna go bust out your camera and start shooting some flat lay today. And certainly if you do, go ahead and tag me. I'm on Instagram at The Bite Shot. I would love to give you that two thumbs up. But in the meantime, I hope you have a fantastic day. Hope you have a lot of fun getting creative out there. Stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye. Do, do you like, oh, do you like my flowers? Yeah. You wanna do a video? Who's that? Me. Yeah? If you look right there, you say, hi guys. Hi. Which camera should we tell them to use? Uh, the big camera. Use the big camera. That's the good one to use, huh? Yeah. Do you like to take pictures, Calvin? Yeah. Blow them kisses? Mm -hmm.